Welcome to the library's Lunch and Learn session on the UpToDate database. The Lunch and Learn sessions are an ongoing series of mini lectures on a variety of research-based topics and databases. Please check the Lunch and Learn page at library.rrc.ca for more information. Let's get started. Today's session will cover UpToDate, a clinical decision support database which will show you how to gain access to the database and perform searches which can benefit your study. To access up to date, go to the library's homepage at library.rrc.ca. Click on the Articles Databases tab in the center of the screen, which will take you to the A to Z list of databases. Next, click on the U on the A to Z list at the top of the screen. Click on Up to Date and log in using your RRC username and password if you haven't already. UpToDate is primarily used as a point of care clinical resource. Some information may be beyond the scope of what nurses and allied support staff would use. However, it contains important information on pathophysiology of a condition, drug therapy, and patient education information. UpToDate's emphasis is on evidence-based decision-making, increasing consistency and optimization of care and providing the latest information. While relatively easy to search, the information goes into great depth and the database provides a variety of pathways to find information. Students can use the database to research a patient's basic condition, examine comorbidity, explore drugs and drug treatments, and more. The search box in UpToDate allows you to search by disease, symptom, lab abnormality, procedure, or drug. The database will suggest search terms for you to choose from and also recognizes commonly used medical abbreviations. UpToDate is both keyword-driven and menu-driven. This slide shows how to use the keyword search from the box in the middle of the screen. Start typing in the search window. UpToDate will suggest search terms immediately and it will recognize abbreviations. Click on one of the suggested headings, click enter, or click on the hourglass to retrieve information. Available topics show on the screen. You are offered the option of limiting your results to adult, pediatric, patient, or graphics. Limiting to adults and pediatric are fairly self-explanatory. Limiting to patient retrieves a variety of patient education documents which are available and up to date. We will look at these later on. For now, we can have a look at some of the graphics here. When looking at a document, we will see many instances of links to figures but this option is a good way to have an overview of many related graphics at once. Hovering over a topic displays an arrow to the right. Click the arrow to view the topic outline. You can quickly jump to any section within the topic by clicking the links in this window. To go to the full document, you can also click on the topic itself using the green title link. The document view displays the body of the text on the right and the topic outline on the left. The topic outline helps you quickly navigate through the document. The summary and recommendations at the top of the outline give you a good overview to determine if it suits your needs. Scrolling through the topic outline on the left side of the screen gives you an overview of the document's content. In the outline you can find definitions, society guideline links, information for patients, graphics, including tables, figures, etc., calculators, references, and related topics. Click on any section of interest and the specific section appears in the larger window. As you scroll through the document, you will notice that the topic outline moves to reflect where you are at in the document. When looking through the document, you can search for particular words or phrases by typing them in the box at the top and clicking on Find. 
A quick link for patient information is also available at the top, along with a share link to email the document. You may change the text size by clicking on the double A option and can bookmark any document by clicking on the bookmark link. Bookmarking documents is an easy way to find them again without searching. At the end of the document, you will find an extensive list of references. Clicking on any of these will take you to that article, which is an effective way to find more information on the topic. Information for patients is also available and includes the basic, beyond the basics, depending on the level of information patients require. We will look at patient education documents shortly. The Society Guideline links are also a very useful source of helpful information from around the world, including Canada. Clicking on these links takes you out of UpToDate and to external websites or documents that provide more information. Here we see an example of the Society Guideline. This is one pathway to discovering external information on topics embedded within UpToDate. These guideline documents will open in another window in most cases. To return to the main UpToDate screen at any time, click on the green UpToDate link at the top. Next, we will have a menu. We will have a look at menu searching. The content tab provides easy access to information, including what's new, practice changing updates, drug information, patient information, topics by specialty, and authors and editors. What's New takes you to editor-selected content on a variety of specialties, all current within the last six months. You can find information on emergency medicine, oncology, rheumatology, and surgery, among many others. For example, if we click on What's New, then Palliative Care, we will see a familiar layout with the table of contents on the left and the text in the right window. As you click on each section, you will be taken to that point in the document. You can click through topic by topic or scroll, scroll through the entire document as you wish. At the bottom of the large window, you see references, which you can click on. The references include bibliographic information, as well as a link out to the PubMed database. At the end of the reference, is a PMID number, which is the PubMed reference number. From the menu, selecting practice changing updates allows you to see recent updates that may have immediate implications for clinical practice. The topic menu at the left is arranged with the most recent updates first. Update summaries are given on the right, with links you can follow to see the information in context. These specific new recommendations and or updates may change usual clinical practice and may have significant and broad impact, but do not represent all updates that affect practice. Selecting drug information from the contents menu gives you access to the entire up-to-date drug library. Click on a selection to view a detailed list of topics associated with that particular section. General drug information retrieves an alphabetical list of drugs, and each will provide brand names, dosing, administration, interactions, and more. Click on patient drug information to see a similar alphabetical list of drugs with information aimed at patient education and including brand names, warnings, usage, etc. Other options include international drug information, pediatric drug information, and what's new in drug therapy. Next on the contents menu is patient education. UpToDate offers more than 1,500 patient education topics by specialty or health category, which may include videos, charts, graphs, and more. These are presented in two reading levels. Basics are short, from one to three pages, written in plain language, and providing answers to the four or five most commonly asked patient questions. 
Beyond the Basics are five to 10 pages and include more detailed information written with professional level content and language for those patients comfortable with this. Both may be printed or emailed. Up-to-date content may be book bookmarked. If a patient education sheet is often provided to parents, for example, bookmarking it provides ease of access to the clinician. The bookmark option is available in the bar at the top right of the window. In this slide, we can see a basic patient education document and a, an example of one of the included graphics. If a patient or parent is comfortable with some technical terms and wants more in-depth information, you may choose the Beyond the Basics option. This is an example of a Beyond the Basics document for swimmer's ear. You will notice the topic outline is more detailed than the Basics document. Returning to the menu, topics by specialty are written by physicians who are experts in their field of practice. Content is available and is evidence-based, comprehensive, fully referenced, and subject to peer review to ensure accuracy and reliability. You may choose from the, least, the listed specialties. A window opens showing topics within that specialty. From here, select one to see the specific information available. The topic outline window, along with the full document, will then open. You can navigate through the document in the same manner as the others we have looked at. Returning to the main screen, we see a link to a variety of calculators. These are arranged by specialty, but you can view them alphabetically as well. Additionally, there is a search box to quickly find a particular calculator. For example, typing BMI in the search box will retrieve many BMI calculators arranged by specialty. Here we see one with areas to input height and weight. Finally, we come to the Drug Interactions tab. You can search for drugs and may see a list of choices. Clicking on one will retrieve a list of the interactions to other drugs or herbs. You can also search herbs to see a list of reactions to drugs or other herbs. Click on one of the results to see more information, including risk rating, summary, patient management, discussion, and footnotes. The footnotes provide links out to the PubMed database for further information. Similarly, you can search for particular herbs to see what interactions may occur with particular drugs. Please note the disclaimer at the end of this list. As part of the library's Lunch and Learn program, a guide has been created to accompany the content covered here today. Please visit the guide for more information on this topic. A direct link will also be added to the Lunch and Learn page on the library's website. Questions? Don't hesitate to contact us. You can contact the facilitator of this presentation by email or go to the library homepage and click the Ask Us button to open a chat with the reference desk staff. You can ask to speak to individuals here as well. Thank you for attending. Please check out the webpage for more information about other Lunch and Learn sessions. New web videos will be added weekly. Live presentations will continue in the fall of 2020. Thank you for attending. If you haven't already done so, please fill out our quick survey using the following link. https colon slash slash bit dot ly slash rrc underscore evaluation. We appreciate your feedback. Please send your questions, comments, and feedback about the Lunch and Learn program to Rosemary Woodby at rwoodby at rrc.ca.